one look, but we'll see. Picks and dance for game number two. KT Rolser versus IM. And that Urgot banned out again against Frozen. Yeah, I don't really see KT. I think that they prefer this Sivir. They want to go all in early. They're not interested in playing a super tanky late game with Urgot. And there's the Cassiopeia. Now that they're idea. over on the blue side, and Callista has been removed by Incredible Miracle this game. Well, he first picked the Sejuani, though. K score has been very good on that champion so far. Yeah. And a little block ban. Not wanting Nagne to have that, of course. But I think the question is, you know, will we see Sejuani banned again? Or will one of these teams be able to pick it up? Also keeping Maokai away from Lilac, always an important thing. Cho'Gath actually huh. banned here. Really wasn't a threat to them in the first game. But perhaps oh. Nagne. Doesn't want to play around that champion, may not want to go for that mid lane cannon again. They've banned out kind of the two tanky mid laners we've been seeing in Urgot and Shogath, so this kind of frees Nagne up to maybe play a little bit more like he has been I earlier have, in the season. I think I would have banned Zareth, honestly, Doa, oh. against Frozen. Uh, well. Frozen is impactful on some of these high damage mages, and it's true. He really hasn't been successful in the last two weeks on either Urgot or Shogath, so why take those out? Scores Rek'Sai. Removed and first pick Sivir. Wow. All right, well, Arrow certainly played well with it, but that does give Maokai and Sejuani over to IM if they want it. And I would imagine that's probably what they're going to go with. And well, I mean, last game. See, I don't know if Sejuani would have saved them really. That new new certainly yeah. not doing Aries or his team too many favors. And well, see if I if I am wants to go super tanky, they can again. They just have to make sure that they don't really contest these early objectives. Uh, or take as many risks so that they can scale and then fight the later dragons. Wow, I'd be, I'd be pretty surprised if they went with Nunu again, would you? I, I don't think it was the pick that was a problem. I think it was the way they played. Well, if they can't handle it, wouldn't that be a good reason to pick something else? But it is an adjustment that I feel that you can make in between games. If they run uh, the same or a similar composition again, and they just calm down a little bit, Maybe they can hit that late game with not too much of a gold deficit. Lulu, okay. banned last game by IM, will be taken this time. Usually Frozen plays Lulu on this incredible miracle yeah. team. Let's see where that goes. It, it does kind of suggest another Kog'Ma for Sunstar, though, I suppose. Yeah, I think it might. They will get Sejuani, though, or KT will get Sejuani. And Again, taking away the Maokai, yeah, a good you, idea too. You really want this engage. You can go for the Alistair again. You can go for Annie here. Thresh still available. Yeah. For Thresh being banned by IM last game, it really has fallen very far down the draft. Well, it seems like KT is pretty confident in Fixer's ability to play some of these other champions now. Yeah. It's just not as high of a priority, I guess. Yeah, and who knows if he can play that support Kendon also. That would be right. really powerful with KT's composition. And I do not recommend playing Jinx against this comp that KT is running. They will be all over Jinx. Yeah. Who is very immobile. Oh, well, wouldn't that apply to Kogma as well, though? Yes, but Kogma has a little bit more range. Oh, that's true. And uh, he can peel for himself instantly with the slow, as opposed to waiting for those traps to set up. I think we're probably going to see this Thresh picked up for Fixer, and uh, Nagne may be able to grab that Zed. Okay, so they see the Juggermaw coming in. Now, GE, i.e. the best Juggermaw team. The original Juggermaw. The original Juggermaw tried to run Juggermaw against KT and got completely shut down by Nagne's Zed. Yeah. Thresh Diana, very powerful here as well to get into that back line. Yeah. A lot of different damage sources coming in as well, too. Oh, he's going to go with the Lissandra. All right, well, you can certainly go in and lock a lot of people up on IM. And they've won almost all but one of their games this season when Nagne's played Lissandra. He's a very good Lissandra player. And against the Nunu, I agree that probably Zed not the best pick because you will be snowballed, you will slow down, your death mark not going to do enough damage. Lissandra can be snowballed. She's still going to unload all of her cooldowns straight onto that cog. Also, the Janna ult going to be helping to keep the Kog'Maw safe. You pop it during death mark, it's hard for Zed to get the maximum amount of damage, whereas Lissandra has a bit more damage from range. So, I think that's a good pick right here. I think we might be seeing a mid Jarvan, possibly, or a top Jarvan. Yeah, it could be, could Either be way. a top Jarvan. 
playing into as an all-in champion against this Maokai. I would imagine Lilac would be a little bit more likely to play Jarvan than uh, Frozen would. But we'll see. Switching it over to Ezreal. Okay, so probably going to be a mid Ezreal then. Yeah, mid Ezreal and top Lulu. So they're going pretty classic Juggermaw right here. Two targets for Nunu to Blood Boil potentially. And it's a nice composition. I'm just unsure whether IM can actually pull this one off. Well, traditionally it's been a pretty tough comp to play right. We've seen a lot of teams try and not do so well. And very, very few successes outside of the GE Tigers. That's right. And especially when KT dominated GE's Jugger the yeah. composition in game three in the last match, I would be really reluctant to play this into I or into KT, but it does seem a bit bold, I doesn't am, it? I am feels that they can pull it off while GE did not. I am not so <laughs> confident in that assessment. I am not so confident either. <laughs> well, they seem pretty confident, uh, actually. That's true. I am is confident. And I'm not speaking in the third person there. I'm saying the team Incredible Miracle is confident. Well, tons of CC, tons of engage, as we've come to expect from KT. Fixer gets his hand on that Thresh, his premier champion so far this season. KT's had a, a real knack for getting very, very good drafts, and this game is certainly no exception. That's a... Uh, it's kind of uh, one of the most ideal engaged comps I think you could get, looking at that one. It's pretty scary. Yes, and uh, I am is going to have an incredibly hard time keeping this Kog'Maw alive. Yep. Well, here we go. It is time. KT Rolster looking to stay out of the up and down matches. They can do it with a win right here. We'll see if they can lock it up with the 2-0. Time to get in the game. are back on Summoner's Rift. The fans screaming, I am fighting. KT fighting. Who will fighting harder though, Monty? Well, I'm gonna go with KT in this one. I think it's KT a pretty safe will, bet. will be the harder fighter. It's true. In this one. And Frozen, right there in the river brush. Just a pretty even fan here, right at level one. Well, let's see, recall from someday, after throwing that ward down, would this be the type of thing you might consider lane swapping against? Uh, I mean, I feel that in that Sivir Kogma matchup last game that they did quite well. And uh, the Alistair support, I think a little bit more all in than the Thresh support. So I would think that this would be an even better matchup for KT, considering they're going against the same lane. Looks like Someday just came back to uh, give a couple saplings over to uh, Nagne to help him get those small raptors. Mm -hmm. I would imagine. I would imagine you are right. So they're trying to get those XP advantages in both lanes. Uh, KT looking for the edge here coming off of the Krugs. The Korean players really like the Oscar, the Grouch, and Yunu skin, don't they? Yeah, they do, but not which is, here. Which is sad, because Nunubot is far superior. Nunubot's a lot more annoying to play, though. Okay, Sonstar hits level two immediately off of the Gromp. Yeah, this so is going to be a little bit better So again, I am just putting a lot of those resources in early. Krug given over to Arrow and Fixer, but they're going to see Kog'Maw already level two. They'll have a bit of trouble right there. And someday he is just going to take Wolves before he TPs back into lane. All right. Well, he'll have that level two as well, of course. Oh! Oh! Ooh, death sentence. Not connecting there. That would have been trouble for Tucson. He already had the yeah. Eye of the Storm down onto Sonstar, so no shield for himself, but that will veer a little bit wide. Well, we'll see if Fixer can maybe force a flash early on with one of these death sentences. He's certainly done it many, many times this season. Yeah, Nagne to play a little bit further back right here. Auto range can be quite irritating from Ezreal. And otherwise, someday coming back into lane, has a ward, has a few extra pots to deal with the harass from Lulu. Oh, Zook. there's a play. And not really a lot of follow-up. Nice spell shield from Arrow to absorb that whirlwind. Here we go. Interesting ward right there, right at 
the time that Score is going to get over to that blue buff. Could see a steal. They have pressure in mid and top lane. So this is a good play for Marys, actually. Yep, coming in to try to push Score away from blue buff, and it looks like he's going to be fairly successful at it. Well, he can't. Oh, yep, that's that new new burst. Can't do anything against that, really. He has yeah. no one there to help him. He just has to give up his blue buff. Good play for Marys. Easy to take that one away when you have both mid and top lane with that advantage. Yep. Score having to turn onto the crop, and Aries just going to go take his own red. Yeah. Great play. Yeah. Good counter jungling from Nunu. So working out much better early here for Incredible Miracle in this game. Yeah, I think the big question is, is what's going to happen in this 2v2? Arrow and Fixer just so threatening. Fixer, yeah, look at that. But they do have that jungle oh. composition. It's extremely good in the late game again. As long as they play a little bit more measured early on, maybe they oh. can do something. Lilac I pushing can't up. Go to Lilac, yeah, way oh. too far ahead. And how many times have we seen this? First blood going to someday because Lilac was pushed way too far up the lane with no vision at all. Yeah, no vision, and they knew where Score was. They had just seen him. You can assume that he's going to go for Wolves or Gromp after that because they knew what his HP was when the blue buff was stolen. Yep. So very easy gank coming in from Score. Well, there's some fans who are probably going to be very sad after this match. Frozen is now. He's doing well in the mid lane so far. He has been. Yeah the best player on IM this season. Well, if you're gonna be an IM fan, I suppose you'll probably be a Frozen fan, although I would be a Tucson fan. <laughs> Tucson's pretty great. Yeah. Well, Nagane already taking a bit of a chunk out of this mid lane turret, too. Look at the zoning that KT got done in the bottom side. However, pretty big CS gap opening between the two duo lanes. Uh, as a result of that level advantage and just the pressure that they've been able to put down with the threat of boomerang blades and death sentences. Another lane looking like it will be won by KT. Yep. Well, meanwhile, this time the Rift Scuttler taken by KT. Ares wasn't able to grab it. Ares got it. Oh, he did get it. It's hard right. to contest okay. the, that against Nunu. And it is. I thought he got it. I thought he was just a little bit late. So yeah, this is uh, all going pretty well for KT so far, even though I am did manage to sneak in with that nice Ooh. counter jungle early into the game. And especially that first blood will help out someday. It can be difficult to play Maokai into Lulu. The range harass. Problematic early on, so that's a very good lane to get that first blood. Yeah. Fixer's taken a decent amount of Poke and his mana is starting to get a little bit lower here. We'll see if Score can make a play, but going into this ward, I doubt he will be able to. He'll just clear it. We'll see what happens next. You know, when you watch Lilac too, you really wonder how how in the world does he get so consistently out of position like that? I mean, his map awareness just isn't that great, unfortunately no. for him. And he's been playing in this scene a long time, but. He's been playing a lot of positions as well. Yeah. I think that's held him back. But top lane in this season, he started out looking decent, but as the season has gone on and on, it's just he's been really representative of the team's fate as a whole, starting out looking okay, taking some wins off of teams like Jin Air, and then not being able to survive down the stretch, not adapting well, and with the swap out of their jungler, losing all the synergy that they had started to establish, it's yeah. kind of a sad story for Incredible Miracle. It wasn't through choices of their own that they got to where they are right now. That's too bad. Ares is doing a pretty good job of counter jungling yeah, score here. very well. Yeah, he's actually making it really tough for score to get money and XP at the moment. Yeah, this is a much improved jungle path from him compared to last game. You can see he already has that sight stone. Yep. So even though deep wards are getting into IM's jungle, they're not able to actually stop Ares in his attempts. Now they do have a lot of wards around this blue buff right here. Fixer going up to harass. They're gonna have to take this. Oh, it, oh wow, they're bold. No kidding. They'll get it anyway. That will go over to Frozen, but Fixer made the attempt at least. Yeah, that was uh, oh, they're gonna lose potentially a lot quite dangerous for Incredible Miracle, but they had a ward at the choke right there, so they knew. It wasn't anyone else coming, but KT gets a lot of damage down on that turret. Yeah, meanwhile, some action down in bot lane. Sunstar taking about half his health. 
in damage from Arrow and Fixer. Wow, huge CS lead for Arrow in this bottom lane already. Not something we're used to seeing, but yeah. man. Whoa, they got him. Still under turret, though. Yeah, not going to dive that one. It's a little bit too Whoa. risky. Knock up onto Arrow. Arrow turns for some good damage onto Tucson here. I don't know if that was quite the trade that I am wanted, but Aerie's here comes. going to come around, though. Yep. Yep, he's coming from behind, and where is Scorey? He's nowhere to be found. He's back in the mid lane right now. Wow, Aero and Fix are playing oh, this boy. properly, though. They don't yep. know where he is. They're starting to get a little bit scared right now. Yeah, I would. Now, so they pull back, wait for the wave to push forward again, but this should give them a little bit of wiggle room. They've still got their summoners, too, so they're well equipped to try to survive. This is the ultimate pop for Arrow. Teleport used as well. Snowball onto Fixer. He's just going to keep walking. Lilac gets pulled under the turret. There's a play as well. Fixer's still alive for now. Nearly went down. Had to ult himself. Oh, they do get the kill in the end on to Fixer. That's right. They're turning around onto somebody now as he teleports in. Arrow exhausted going after Lilac. Great ult comes in from Sejuani. Tucson gets taken out by a score. Frozen not really able to make a big impact, but man, Arrow did a double kill for him, and so they got the kill on Fixer, but they paid for it that with was three of their own. And Ooh. a dragon. Yeah, uh, That Should was an be. extremely ambitious teleport coming in from Lilac right there, and yep. he just immediately gets hooked into the turret. KT easily able to turn that around. Great TP from Someday to lock him up after Lilac was already gone, and three kills just for a single support and you lose the dragon off of that maybe even your mid lane turret dragon's already gone they split up no one gets hit by the true shot barrage well that's pretty much uh, about worst case scenario for i am there well worst case is they actually don't kill fixer but they dove hard enough to get him however that may have cost them more in the long run yeah wow i am so. just looking very uncoordinated yeah and pretty disrespectful actually of the fact that Maokai could really quite easily turn that around if you took too many turret hits. Well, and also Frozen, he has a tier right now. He has no damage to actually come down and roam and make that play. Meanwhile, Lissandra already with her ultimate can just come down there and make a, a difference immediately. Right. So if they over committed to that, Lissandra has the time just to walk straight out of the mid lane. And that's exactly what we saw. Really, really risky play from Incredible Miracle. Pretty much, you know, and it's it's sad to see Lilac, you know, fall so far. He was never a tip-top player here in his time on IM, but I think in, in whatever form Incredible Miracle comes back, if they make it back for the summer season, I don't think Lilac's going to be a player on it. I could see him being a coach, but... Yeah, it may be time the, for him to transition. I think it is. Into that role because yeah. he just hasn't been able to hang. <laughs> and granted, in Korea... Top lane is probably the most stacked position, especially after the mass exodus of players. There is still a plethora of top lane talent uh, in this country. So it's even harder for him compared to players at other positions well, that you know, may, have, you know, may have gotten easier, especially if we look like a ch at a position like the jungle. We've been hearing for years, too, just how you know, strategically intelligent Lilac is. We see a bit of action in the bot lane, but it just hasn't transitioned into actual gameplay and I think a lot of people are waiting for him to maybe step back to that coaching role now. Well, it's one thing, you know, if you don't have the mechanics to play it outright, or of course, in the moment, it's very difficult yeah. uh, for a pro player to make the proper decision. So even if he can be creative in terms of what he brings to the table before and after the game. Oh, Tucson, that's a lot of damage onto him. Oh. Very lucky that he got that knock up with Fixer. I think that death sentence was pretty close to connecting otherwise. Tucson hasn't been on his game yet. This is going to no. be a, potentially an ult dive under the tower. The very uh, least. We'll see a score coming in. Misses the ult. Nice dodge there, but Tucson's still in a lot of trouble. Gets the knockback. Arrow in big trouble now, actually. Minions doing damage. Ares picks up that kill. Sloppy, sloppy Whoops. dive from KT. Yep. Uh, they weren't on the same page right there. They should have just zoned them out and tried to take the turret instead of having Arrow attempt to fall in. I mean, Arrow's ult was down right there. <laughs> not going to catch know, that man. one. That is <laughs> not a good play from KT Rolster. Uh, not exactly. Let's watch it again. So basically right here, this is fine, but uh, just straight up airballing. There's the boomerang blade also missing, and then score gets knocked back pretty damn far. Yeah, I feel like score was expecting the flash, and it did not happen. But that's fine. You can waste an ult right there. 
as long as you actually go ahead and push the tower and take the tower down. You just don't commit to a fight like that when you don't have your crucial ultimates that you need in order to make that play. You know, despite the misstep for KD, though, it did give Someday a chance to just get in between the first and second turrets, do some dirty farming, and make life even harder for Lilac. Look at that. Already 123 to 85 CS. That's not how this matchup is supposed to go, either. Not usually. And again, you know, despite the kind of silly death from Arrow in the bot lane, he's still up 107 to 88. So KD still remains in a very good situation, although Fixer may be in a little bit of trouble. Here comes score as well. Oh, good turnaround for KT. Will Nogne decide to go in? No, not quite. Uh, I feel he uh, could have actually awkward. ulted that one, but... Might have been able to. Uh, oh, uh, Lilac had his, has his TP up because... Uh, uh, slightly sooner because he actually TP'd into that fight a little bit earlier than Someday did. Yep. And also looks like he does have some summoner cooldown reduction as well. So that was actually a very smart play from KT not to follow that one up, knowing that there was this very subtle difference in summoner cooldowns. Well, I think they uh, just momentarily ago learned a lesson in not following up things that uh, probably shouldn't be followed it's up. It's a good timer, though. I would assume that's why they decided not to go all in. Someday was saying he didn't have TP mm. and was about to come up. That was a very narrow window, however, and by not committing to it, you know, the only thing they really lose is uh, Sivirult, which is Relatively short cooldown, so can we afford yep. to be burned like that? That's right. Dragging up in a minute. The ults should be available again by then. A little bit of vision for both teams near the dragon pit. And with KT having that length, that lane uh, pushed up so aggressively, they'll probably be able to get a couple more wards in. Although Ares, we'll see if you can get that pink ward. Yeah, and if you're KT right now, you really just want to push towers as hard as you can. Yeah. Uh, because mid and bot getting very low. How are they going to deal with that? Crusher, if you can take the tower and build a wave right before that dragon spawns, there's really going to be no way for IM to deal with that. And that's why Ares is in lane right now. Right. Well, this is one of those really scary positions where IM knows if they lose a team fight at this point, they could lose dragon and like two turrets too. Yeah, it's pretty desperate for them. So I don't blame Ares for being right here next to the turret. Yep. Of course, he can really help wave clear with the Rangers Trailblazer also. Oh, that turret nearly dead, and uh, Arrow able to take so out the low uh, ward. Too. Yeah. It's a very unfortunate position for IM. And if you're KT, you don't have to set up right now. Your setup will be taking one of these towers. Wow, I am just going to recall. Yeah, I'm just going to have to give up that dragon and the turret. Mid lane goes down, top lane's about to go down. They're gonna get bot as well. This is brutal. And look at oh that. Boy. They immediately turn onto it. At the same time, Someday just wants to put pressure on the top side, deny as much CS as possible. Yep. This is just a laning stomp here from KT and showing how if you time the, the towers going down properly, Someday doesn't care about dying right here. Uh, it's not the biggest deal. His team is he's still actually, getting Dragon right now. He's distracting them more than anything. Yeah, he's happy actually yep. to see Ares up there. He's like, good, now we know where the jungler is on the map. Yeah. We have this huge advantage. They didn't take the top lane down, but it is just hanging by a thread right now. Yep. You can literally walk up and auto it. Oh, it's down ready. Wow, bot turret going down oh at the same my. time. What a massive gold Jeez. swing in favor of KT. Dragon <laughs> and three turrets. Just like that, 5K ahead. But notice how KT, that's really good shot calling. They didn't want to commit to the dragon right when they had spawned, even though they had the lane pressure. Yep. Instead, they make the decision to go for the ultra safe dragon right when they can push through. And they just wear IM down in lane until they can't defend anymore. Man. And then it makes that dragon even easier to get. Really well done lane pressure this game by KT. And that is just like a soul crushing situation too where oh you my, lose the dragon and tur two turrets at the same time. <laughs> that's Tilt City right there. No You're kidding. sitting in that IM booth and you see yeah, all the turrets getting destroyed and falling one by one on your screen and then the dragon buff, that is. Yep. <laughs> that is a lights. rough situation. That's lights out. And then your Lilac and realize you're 60 CS behind your opponent again. It's pretty rough. It's Someday rough. looking to cross the flame horizon. He's on his way. He's well on his way. Yeah. Only four. He's over halfway on his way, in <laughs> fact. Well, KT. Magne just being a jerk and freezing right now. Yep. Yeah. Well, isn't Lissandra always freezing? <laughs> Isn't that kind of her default Fair position? enough, though. Fair enough. You, br you bring up a good point. <laughs> Touche, sir. <laughs> wow, they're freezing in three lanes. Yeah, it looks like 
they want to create some of those big super this is waves a, again, huh? This is a good call from IM, though. If they're going to freeze like this, just five man mid, see if you can get a tower down. Mm. Well, will that signal Arrow to just push up bot aggressively, though? Yes, that's exactly what it should do. It looks like it is. And so that pulls IM back in that direction. I think they could have played that a little bit more aggressively in the mid lane instead of immediately capitulating. Well, Frozen actually dodges the hook right there that we saw getting wound up by Fixer in mid. Immediately acquiescing to the query posed by Arrow. That's right. The Arrow question. That's right. The Arrow conundrum. Sounds like the next born identity novel or something. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Arrow's a good name for a spy, too. That's true. If I was a spy, I might consider the name Arrow. What would your first name be? Uh, probably something like Brock. Brock Arrow? Brock Arrow. That sounds uh, like, well, it's more of an action hero kind yeah. of Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if it possesses the subtleness oh. to be a spy name. Yeah, maybe like, uh, I don't know. It's, it's, it's much easier to think of action like names, isn't it? How about Spencer Arrow? That sounds more sophisticated. Xavier Arrow. <laughs> That's a good one. Oh, Tucson. Grab. There's Flayed in the box. Uses the ult. Very low health, though. Xavier Arrow. <laughs> Super spy. Yep. And he has no middle name, so you can avoid that cliche. <laughs> That's a good one. Oh. Well, yep, this one's yeah, this one's pretty over. Uh, it's going to take a pretty big miracle for the incredible miracle crew <laughs> to come back. They it's have to live up to their name, though. It's always so hard to say that about this team because it's like, well, gee, would it take an incredible miracle? Uh, and oftentimes it would. <laughs> pretty much every time, at least yeah. in the second half of this season. Yep. Yep, pretty much. And it's it's disappointing, too, for a team that was was uh, so dominant for so long in StarCraft II to struggle so much for so long in League of Legends. Goodbye, oh, boy. Goodbye, Tucson. It's, uh, yeah, it's tough. Tucson really has problems on these disengaged champions. It's compared to some of the play we've seen, I mean, even the support Aurelia individually was good. The pick was not good, but he himself was pretty decent, actually. Yep. Oh, Arrow getting chunked out pretty heavily in the bot lane. But I think this will keep a bit of pressure onto the turret here. But yeah, I don't think Tucson should be playing these more passive supports. I think he knows deep in his heart he needs uh, to be what, bloodthirsty. What can, he, what can he do at this point? He tried Maokai, he tried Kale, and... He pretty much tried everything, didn't Vagar, he? Vagar, and... Uh, he was the first one to play Vagar before that was really a, a meta pickup. Nice steal there, actually. Yeah. So he's he's run the table with weird engaged supports even when he doesn't have Thresh and now he's going yeah. back to meta, but it just doesn't seem to suit his playstyle. And he gets caught he's been caught out a lot in the two games that we've seen tonight. Hmm. Well could have tried uh Zareth support maybe. A lot of CC. Not not an engaged support though, so I'm not sure that would really help him. What about uh Oh yeah, that's a trick. We got a flashy on uh, Zareth support for the yeah. sweet it's the sweet engage Noah. Velkaz. Just use your angles <laughs> to engage. No. I don't think those <laughs> champions are good for him. I'd rather see that Maokai support come back. Honestly. I'd rather see the Aurelia support come back for him. Like I said, and individually it was he was fine. He actually did very well on it. You know, I think he should just play Blitzcrank. What do you what do you really have to lose at this <laughs> point? Make some grabs, make some plays. Blitz out. Yep. Oh, well, Tucson point blank death sentence for him. Oh boy, that was fast. KD backing away, Siverall pops on Star getting chunked already. Two shot Raj comes through, there's support. the ult from Sejuani. Someday coming down from the top, he's oh. going to advance onto Sansar right through the wall. Wild Growth gets the knock up Nagne behind. He's going to take down Frozen. And KD just chasing away I am Someday still chasing around Sansar at the bottom. That's a double kill now for Nagne. Meanwhile, let's cut back to the other fight. There we go. Well, this is a little bit sad to watch, isn't it? Uh, yeah. 
Well, right there, unfortunately for Sansar, he flashed, but right at the wrong time, Twisted yeah. Advance followed him. It's so, already activated. Yeah, if it had been just a little bit sooner, probably would have gotten out of that one and been able to kite decently well, but uh, KT instantly exploding to Zen meant that there really wasn't that much peel, and Nagne chose the right target, gets into the back line to deal with Frozen after Wild Growth has already been used on Sonstar, so selecting the right target, and now should be... Okay, Glitterland steal incoming. Jushat Barrage softens the Baron up. Oh, oops, Lilac engaged on over the cliff. Nagne joins in. Baron taken by KT. They're going to get the kill on the Lilac as well, and the recall's incoming. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yep, yep. Tucson just gets smacked right in the face by a death Ooh. sentence. Dies instantly. They, they are peeling out right here. Frozen pops the true shot barrage. And Sonstar gets, this is very important though. Oh, Sonstar shouldn't have flashed, should have waited that one out just a little bit longer. That allows Nogne to get right on top of Frozen. Nothing he can do anymore. And Arrow just has to run ahead with that red buff. Nogne grabs the double with the Q. A little bit gratuitous. Zonya's hourglass right there. He probably wasn't going to get down, bursted down by Lilac, considering Lilac has no items. Seemed like kind of a style situation to me. I am already on the run again. <laughs> Maybe not the best. Oh boy, here comes Nagne. He, he comes in. No ult, though he does have his ult. There's the Zonya's. That was a good one there. Score comes in with the engage as well, and KT cleaning up that one so fast. Yeah, so far ahead. Oh boy. That Sivir ult. Oh, the Lilac. death is on the Lilac. No. I can't watch anymore. Taking the cue right there, Frozen. Oh, baited that death sentence big time, jeez. Oh, might pay for it. Someday it's like, no man, I'm tanking. <laughs> oh boy, oh Frozen. Someday you just take turrets, look at this. Frozen Lubop and a turret to versus dodge. Falcon. What? <laughs> what is this? Oh no. That is that's uh, the That's the F FML face from <laughs> He's like, when, yeah. I couldn't beat a tree with a turret, the help of a turret. When your Ezreal can't beat Maokai under turret, that's a, that's when you know things are not going well. <laughs> okay, Fixer, having a great time. Fixer having a giggle there Yep. in the booth. Hit some very nice death sentences over the course of that engagement. That's well, just how he, far KT ahead, uh, is ahead right now. You can he baited just in. whiff the central. You can waste the several to a certain degree, get slowed down. I am kited that quite well, actually. He baited in Frozen so hard before uh, someday, you know, took it over. But he, he <laughs> let himself get hit with the Mystic Shot. He just stood there. So Frozen came back. Well, I guess I'll try again. And death sentence comes out point blank. You're not dodging that one. Yeah, this Ezreal just doesn't have much damage with the Iceborne either compared to a Trinity yeah. Force. Well, Thresh, I mean, with the items he's got so far, he can certainly take a hit or two. And <laughs> it's going it was for just, righteous glory Thresh. Oh, it boy. It was just such an obvious bait. Wow. That was... Uh, we've gotten a little bit silly at this point. This game is out of control. It's going to be interesting for Jin Air too, because Jin Air uh, has to play KT in their last match. And yeah. it's a match that's looking increasingly like it really could go either way with how KT is playing these days. You know, it's it'll be a big deal if Jin Air wins. Because if CJ wins, then third place is locked up anyway. So it, it doesn't really matter as much. But if Jin Air wins, then it might make a big difference, actually, who takes that one. Yeah, very well could. Well, mid inhibitor is quite vulnerable. KT just waiting for that final engage again. Just not a ton of siege, but they've got all this tankiness. They've got this huge engage. They're just going to run right out of the turret. Death sentence dodge. I am thinking about coming in. Ares can't even flash in for that absolute zero engage that I advocate for some strange reason. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. It's because you like, like watching. Here. You, like, you like watching style points on Nunu, Doa. Yeah, dude. It's understandable. Why not? I think it's fairly natural. Lilac like, literally has no items. This Lulu is a glorified second support at this point. Yeah. He has a Morello Nomicon, a Blasting Wand. That is doing absolutely nothing to KT. Yeah, it's not looking good. Tower is slowly falling, and this, and KT will be in room. We relieved to win this one. Here we go. Here they go. Yep. Oh, oh nice. Okay. Altus and locked up already. Someday coming in. Oh, gets pushed back into the team. That's convenient. Sonstar with a kill or with getting killed already. Nagne 
Zonia's after locking people up long enough for the double to come oh, in for Arrow. Lives. He does live. How many hit points does he have? He had like Any. less than yeah. 10 hit points. He did. Oh, meanwhile, triple kill. Okay. Nagne. Pieces out of that fight. Wow, of Nagne course. just barely living through the Akathian surprise at the end of that game. And yeah. KT still pressing forward. They're going to take a second inhibitor. The surprise is that he lived. <laughs> that was the Akathian surprise that time, yep. the Nagne. Oh, yeah, after Sunstar, you know, died, he's like, wow, I didn't expect that. Nagne's I like, did not expect Nagne to live through that. That's more like a Cathian oh. surprise. Oh. Da -da, da -da, da -da, da -da. oh! Whoa, he gets it with the two shot barrage! <laughs> oh, man. He really oh. should have seen that one coming. Yep. <laughs> you know the best part is? He could have ulted himself right there. He could have, yeah. <laughs> I think that was a... He felt, he felt bad. <laughs> like, uh, I'll help your stat line a little bit. Nagde could have just ulted himself. He's like, hey, zero deaths, one death. My KDA stays the same. I don't care. Oh, Frozen. Wow. Well, balling out of control now. It steals the red buff also. Truly game change. <laughs> <laughs> He's turning it around. You know, that's extra funny because uh, most pro players when they play Lissandra have a hotkey that's just dedicated to self ulting. So you can just hit it and it just ults yourself instantly. You so. don't just ult R? Ult. Like alt key? The alt key? ALT? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh. Oh, Lilac. The suffering of the Lilac. Our 2015 spring season Long Panda Award winner. No. Dies again. Tucson flashes. You, you, That's a fast tree. You can ult R, but it's just faster to have it bound to a different key. So you, yeah, I it's suppose. It's just so quick to do it that way. It's a good idea. Oh. Tucson just kind of hanging out. Because what's else, what else is he going to do at this point? Team's on his almost 20,000 gold down, and I and KT coming in for perhaps the killing blow. And someday tanking that turret does a little bit more damage than those tier twos, though. Needs to be kind of careful. Oh boy, Frozen coming in. Arrow getting very low. Fixer has to pop the box. It looks like it'll be a kill. On to Arrow, actually. Fixer in big trouble. Make that a double kill for Frozen. Fallen out of control indeed. <laughs> Meanwhile, the super minions pushed away by Tucson. That's a nice arc. That'll help them save that turret for the moment. Yeah, it was a good ult, but they're just going to turn right around onto this Baron now. Nagne yep. looking, oh. he's, he's frozen hunting. Or is he being hunted? No. <laughs> <laughs> Nagne walking a lot of wards right now. KT getting kind of silly in this one. They should just yeah. wait for Arrow and Fixer to come back up. They have that the super minion waves. Easy Baron could be incoming. Well, if this one was a bit tighter, it would already be over. But KT, pretty comfortable with the position that they're in in this game. And why shouldn't they be? Right? Oh, yeah. Oops. He missed Nagne. his W. Yep. Oh, no wards on the Baron. Plenty of vision already up. Still no Last Whisper, actually. But nobody having that much armor. Oh, uh, Baron. Two shot barrage is up. Could be another miracle play from Frozen. Here we go. It's coming. Two shot barrage. Oh, barely doesn't get it. We got way too excited about that one. The crowd. Close call. Super we're into it right now. Hoping we got to find the... something to get excited about. <laughs> do we? We do. How about CJ versus Jyn Air? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, next is CJ versus Janair. Let's get excited about that one. Yeah, uh, it's going to be awesome. It actually will be. So. A battle for third place. Who's going to take it? CJ Entis versus Janair. Looking forward to seeing what bow tie gank by mom is wearing today. We'll see as the engage happens. We'll continue to wonder who's going to take it, CJ or Janair, in our next match. Because KT is very obviously taking this one. Land of Frozen. Oh, Frozen. Frozen with the plays, he's still alive. The kill on the score. Oh, but that's it. That is it. For both Frozen and Incredible Miracle, the Nexus turret's going down, and a Baron-powered KT Rolster will cruise to a 2-0 victory. That means that Incredible Miracle and Samsung are going to those up and down matches to fight for a spot in Champions, while KT is safe to get into Champion Summer. Well, that's a big relief for the KT organization. Sure is. And 
they can be happy, I think, exiting this season. They still have a match against Jin Air. They could, could play spoiler, depending on how tonight's, what tonight's outcome is. But KT definitely coming in strong in the second part of this season. Fixer a big, big part of that. Great yeah. game by Arrow, too. Yeah, KT, I mean, really turning things around again in the second half of the regular season. And, and it just makes you excited about summer. You know, it's you kind of wish you could fast forward and see how this team is going to be then. Well, KT came into this season after a, a solid preseason, looking like yeah. they'd be at least a middle-of-the-table team. Looking like three, four or so. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then they 